Our Champions League adventure continues today with Paris Saint-Germain and the chance to make it three wins from three in our Champions League group that we're not supposed to be able to get out of. Hello and welcome to Club 5, part 20 of non lead to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are at home against Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League and also at home against Leipzig in the Bundesliga. Since you were last with me, we had a nice little run of games. Um, two Champions League wins. You obviously saw the Atletico Madrid one. We then went and thumped Shakhtar away from home as well. Tashrik Matthews, again, feeling the need to prove that he is a Champions League player after all. We also won three consecutive games that we should have won in the Bundesliga. And then the hard games started again. We drew against Schalke. We lost at home against Borussia Mönchengladbach. We're probably going to lose against Leipzig as well. But then we've got an easier game. And then, oh goody, that's a... That's a month. We've talked about November being a month before. Goodness me. But the big news is, well, there's two pieces of big news. Firstly, Bundesliga, we're sitting pretty. We're absolutely fine. We only need to finish in the top half. We're hovering in a Europa League qualification spot, not too far away from the Champions League qualification spots. And Liam Thorne is the top scorer. That's happy, happy news. Even happier news is the fact that as it stands right now, we are clear at the top of our Champions League group. A win against Paris Saint-Germain, which might seem unlikely, but Atletico Madrid beat them last time round. We beat Atletico Madrid. By that process, we should be able to beat Paris Saint-Germain. And that could leave us, after three games, on nine points, all but qualified and confused, mainly. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I've got a feeling Atletico might have been a fluke. So this is the team we're putting out there for the Paris Saint-Germain game. We've got Mayer in goal, a back four of Friedel, Emmanuel, Schuster and Buckeray. Janja Cic and Mori in midfield. Okafor, Matthews and Chaton behind Liam Thorne. Vital is slowly returning to fitness. So this might be the last time we have to play Matthews, who's not a Champions League player in the Champions League. But we shall see. Hopefully he'll decide to prove me wrong again. Oh, it's the Emirates derby. How exciting. Um, right, let's get into the game and figure... If they've got the same sponsors as us, why haven't we got as much money as them? It makes me very sad. Why do they need a sponsor the same as our sponsor? Right, let's... What should we do? Calm underdogs. See, against Atletico, we were the favourites, if I remember correctly. But now we're underdogs against Paris Saint-Germain. So let's do the, the famous underdog team talk of just, yeah, calmly do what you can. But don't worry about it. If we lose both games against Paris Saint-Germain, then... I, th I don't think we have too much to complain about there, probably. Quite a good team. I've got one of my uh, former Chelsea players from my beta save. Delict. Delict. Did I ever learn to say his name right? Was that right? But he's quite good, isn't he? He's he's probably better than most of our players. Oh, Gordon Bennett. Schuster's just scored an own goal. Just to really demonstrate that he's not as good as Delict at centre-back, he's decided to... Uh, just nod it past nod it past his own keeper, which isn't the ideal start, really. When we played against Atletico Madrid, we were very efficient. We were very tight at the back and we caught them with a breakaway goal. We can't do that against Paris Saint-Germain now, can we? Because we've managed to concede a goal through completely our own fault. I mean, we've had more possession, better chances... There's not We've not really seen much of Paris Saint-Germain so far, other than the fact we've gifted them the opportunity to go 1-0 up. And now we've got an anxious Okafor, a frustrated Janjicic, a furious Schuster. I'm not surprised. Right, we need a, we need a change of, a change of, not tactic, but a change of mental attitude in this second half. No more of this calmness, because we actually, we are the better team. It's time for everyone to dig in. Yeah, we do deserve to win this team, this game tonight. Let's go out there in the second half with a more positive mental attitude. Perhaps I got it wrong in the first half. We are the home team. Perhaps we should be trying to win the game. We've still got frustrated players, which I'm not used to having all these frustrated players. Normally, it's us frustrating the opposition. But we're getting all flustered now because we're playing against probably the best opposition we've played against since we've been at Hamburg, I guess. We've seen from the Bundesliga, there's not really a standout team in the Bundesliga, whereas Paris Saint-Germain, 
They've got a lot of money, haven't they? Okafor, though. Doesn't matter how frustrated he is. Just after we start again for the second half, Okafor grabs his second massive Champions League game of the se- goal of the season. And it's 1-1. And it's all to play for, boys and girls. Okafor, surely, surely is getting a big move at the end of this season. He's come from nowhere to be the standout star of Hamburg. Dragged us up into the Champions League. Now he's the standout performer against big teams in the Champions League. I don't think Okafor is a, champ- uh, a Hamburg player this time next year. I think he's going to... We've already seen Adley go for 30 or £40 million. Pounds, I forget what it was. Surely Okafor goes the same way. Massive money to go and play for a team where he can consistently play at this level, where he obviously deserves to be. Okafor again. He's turned the game on its head. 64 minutes on the clock. It's Hamburg 2, Paris Saint-Germain 1. Noah Okafor with both goals at 7 this season now for Okafor. And, uh, I mean, that one was easy peasy. Easy peasy. Now what on earth do I do? We've now got a motivated and composed team. I guess I just have to leave well alone. Liam Thorne doesn't really look like he's turned up at all. We've got Canoni on the bench who can come on and run around a bit. So we'll make that change. And... I guess we probably leave everything else well alone for now. Everyone's... Oh, in fact, Friedel's tired, but we don't have a left-back. We don't have an option to come on for Friedel. I think we just make that one change for now. We've got Vital, who could come on, but he's not fully fit. We've got Rodriguez, who, if needed, could come on. And now Mori's picked up an injury. That means Rodriguez is now needed. There's no point playing an injured man in there when we have the player we signed to replace him sat down there on the bench. So Rodriguez can come on for Mori. And... I think we just let the clock tick down at this point. Oh, Rodriguez playing very deep. I don't like him there. Uh, Friedel, way forward though. I do like him here. And he's charging through. What a pass to Chaton. Chaton looked, glanced across, saw it was Canoni and not Thorne and decided to go it alone and forces the corner. And it's Friedel to take the corner. We don't have the big threat that is Liam Thorne. And Chaton doesn't prove me wrong this time like he did the last, not Chaton, Canoni. The last time I moaned about not having a big man in there and could only score the header. He's not going to do it twice. I'm trying all my old tricks. Right, but right, just play it back to the keeper. Excellent stuff. Now boot it forward. See, we know what we're doing. Friedel into Matthews. Matthews, I could probably waste some time by taking Matthews off and bringing Vital on. And I think that's, uh, that's a time-wasting exercise we're going to do now. Get Vital back into the team for the last minute and a half of the match. Try and run the clock down a little bit because this is this is a spectacular performance in this second half. Janjicic and Rodriguez just knocking it around between the two of them. Schuster, please don't combust again. Maya lumps it forward for Canoni to chase. Canoni's supposed to run around a bit but didn't. And now Paris Saint-Germain in behind. No! Oh, it's, we've... Oh, so late in the game. It, we've, we deserve to win. Look at the stats. So late in the game, and it's their first real threatening attack. And they've scored. I guess that's what makes them a good team, and us not so much. We have still played very, very well in this second half. Yes, we'll still bring Vital on. We may as well at least avoid losing. Please let us avoid losing. Chaton heads not very clear, and this will be disgusting. 2-2, I can live with. We probably should have won. But if you'd have offered us that before the match or before the season started, we absolutely take it. So let's, yeah, you did well to come back and salvage a draw. Let's not dwell on the fact that we kind of threw it away a little bit at the end. Um, Atletico won their game as well. So what does that make the group look like at this stage? Three games gone. We're on seven points. Atletico on six. Paris Saint-Germain on four. We do still have to play both Atletico and PSG away from home. I'm not as confident sat here on seven points as I would have been on nine points, knowing we've both got we've got those two massive away games to come. If we lose both of those, is another win against Shakhtar? Is ten points going to be enough to squeeze our way out of the group? They've got to play each other again. Hmm. I don't know. We're going to have to grind out a result in one of those away games, I think. But let's go and play Leipzig and forget about the Champions League for a little while. Two changes for the Leipzig game. Then Friedel has had to go on a week's holiday because he's all tired out. Um, so we've brought Rubinho in, or Rubino. I keep calling him Rubinho. Just Rub- Rubino. Um, we signed him like two years ago, a year ago, last summer. 
on the cheap to be a backup for Friedel. That's exactly what he's doing. He's going to come in and be a backup for Friedel. So he comes in at left back and Rodriguez comes into the midfield for Murray, who picked up a knock in that last game. He's only going to be out for like three or four days. In fact, he's you, he could probably play, but it seems silly to force him to in the circumstances. But once again, the, uh, the small squad syndrome is likely to cost us in the Bundesliga because we're three, ga- we're three days after playing Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League. We've now got a massive Bundesliga game and we had a massive Bundesliga game just before. And we're tired. We haven't been able to rotate the team properly. Um, let's go and get revenge on Leipzig for last time. I don't know what happened last time, but I'm sure we want revenge for it. But I think we're going to we're gonna struggle. Although looking at their team, they're even more tired than we are. So I don't quite know how they've managed to do that. But maybe we don't suffer. Maybe they haven't been rotating either, which seems a little bit weird. Are they even in the Champions League? I'm not sure they are, but I guess they're, they're maybe in the Europa League. So they've probably played more recently than we have maybe. So... Perhaps, perhaps it won't cost us. Perhaps we'll be fine. Oh, look, it cost us. We're going to blame fitness and nothing else. There is nothing else to blame. Oh, little telly. It might be disallowed yet. Fingers crossed. Look how excited their manager is. He get, they get so excited. Look, do you? he's watching the little telly. Are you really going to stand there fist pumping? The players ain't bothered anymore. It's just the manager. Super excited about it all. With good reason. Because the goal stands. But... The only person still celebrating by the time that was announced was their manager, but he was celebrating for everybody. Right, I, d- I don't know what to do at this point. I'm looking at that bench thinking there's uh, there's not much that's going to come on and turn this game around in the second half. We're 26 minutes in and I'm already thinking about turning the game around in the second half. We're just, we haven't got the oomph to be able to compete in this many big games back to back. We saw it. We saw it in the last couple of episodes, in fact, where we've we've had the big game against Atletico. I think we struggled in the second game after that, maybe. Or was it the game before that? Uh, but in the first episode of the season, we had a big 6-0 win or 6-1 win and then struggled. We need players. And to get players, we need money. And to get money, we needed the Champions League run because apparently we don't get paid for that until the end of the season. So next year, theoretically, we get money. But... I think I'm probably going to have moved on by then. I am regularly, there's that man again. I am regularly keeping an eye on the available jobs and I am, I'm being quite discerning with what I'm picking. I'm only leaving for other Champions League level jobs. I'm not going to be accused of taking a backward step again, which weirdly, there was a few people who said I should have gone to Leipzig in the summer who finished seventh, I think. And the reason we didn't go to Leipzig is because they didn't get in the Champions League. They might have more money, but I'm, I'm a Champions League manager now. I will continue to manage in the Champions League until I fail to qualify for it myself. And then we'll reassess. But this is, if I'm to leave Hamburg during this season, it will be for another Champions League club. Um, right, we're going to continue pushing for revenge. Liam Thorne has been in great form, but not so much in this episode. I'm starting to wonder, across both series both this and it's coming home, that we've got some players who like to play better on my PC and some who like to play better on my MacBook. Liam Thorne certainly feels like a MacBook player to me. He doesn't seem to like hanging out on the the bigger screen and the better processing on my PC. He gets a little bit upset, but perhaps he doesn't like hanging out in the garage. It's turned cold again today. All week I've been recording without even needing the heating on out here in the garage. The heating's on again today. So perhaps Liam Thorne doesn't like the cold. Shaton, across to Matthews. Can we grab an equaliser? No, because he, he is not a Champions League quality player. Vital, are you ready? On you come, sir. And Canoni, get on as well. Double substitution. Let's make a difference. Let's show some passion. The, the 70th minute passion request is becoming as common as the 70th minute double substitution now. If we're not winning, we want passion. Oh, good, they've brought on Timo Werner. Oh, he must be about a thousand years old now, but still. They're playing him as an attacking midfielder as well. I'm less worried. My experience with him from being with Bayern Munich in the beta. Play him as a striker. That's Kev's Kev's tip of the day. Play strikers as strikers. We're gonna bring Rocky on on the right hand side for Chaton. See if he see if he can offer us something different. What can we do? Demand more. We've got to get an equalizer. 
Vital into Rodriguez. Rodriguez could shoot from here. It falls to Canoni, and there is your equaliser. Canoni with his fourth goal of the season now. He's actually turning into a fairly useful backup striker, which is a very pleasant situation to accidentally find ourselves in. He can play as a backup on that left wing as an inside forward. He can play as a backup up front. He's starting to score goals. We might have kind of accidentally stumbled across a half decent cover player for the for the two positions that we needed cover for which last season's transfer policy finally starting to come good Canoni's coming good we've got Rubino who's in on the, at left back who we brought in last summer last Rodriguez we brought in last summer it's last summer's signings they're all coming good and it's another draw this time it's us with the last minute equalizer i guess on balance of the whole episode we can't really complain at two draws but I do feel like we should have beaten Paris Saint-Germain. But let's not dwell on it. Right, when are we going to be back for the next episode? I guess this Shakhtar game becomes super important. I think we're... Oh, actually, we've got both Paris Saint-Germain and Atletico by then. Right, I'm not going to show you Paris Saint-Germain again. I will show you the next Atletico game because I'm assuming we lose there. If we then lose there as well... The Shakhtar game probably doesn't even matter. So that Atletico game becomes crucial to whether or not we make it out of our Champions League group. So we'll probably do, I don't know, maybe Bayern and Atletico, maybe Atletico and Leverkusen. I'm conscious of the fact these episodes are very close together, but I guess you're probably going to want to see us play Bayern Munich because we haven't done that for a little while. So probably Bayern and Atletico Madrid. And then once we're done with the Champions League, we can do a whole bunch of games and start progressing the season again. That's my plan. It's our first season in the Champions League. We have to enjoy the group stage because we're probably not going to get beyond it. If you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.